I lived in Paris for about three years of my life. It was a wonderful experience and, and great to be back here, although in terrible times. Fear and defiance are the things that really struck me this week, and it was exemplified just on one night. The defiance was that people came out, came into public places, wanted to be seen in crowds, wanted to be seen in something that could be a target, a thing they'd been told not to be by the Prime Minister and police and others. People coming out to public places, and one of those public places was Place de la République. And on that night, one night, we saw fireworks going off. Well, fireworks sound a lot like gunshots, so you can imagine what the reaction would be. <laughs> Sheer panic. People getting trampled in this square that I was in. The fear on people's faces, really scared. Parents being separated from their kids. It was, uh, it was quite something to see, and we, in fact, thought that there was indeed another attack. Thankfully, that was not the case, but seeing the reaction told me that this is a city that justifiably would have fear going forward. One of the most poignant moments I witnessed while here in Paris happened in front of the monument behind me uh, in the Place de la République after a moment of silence to honor the victims of the attack. I saw a group of women uh, who very clearly didn't know each other prior uh, to bumping into each other at the monument. I saw them uh, break down together. They were all crying, uh, holding each other and trying to comfort one another. It was a, a really powerful symbol of a city coming together to grieve those who were killed and also possibly a loss of a sense of security here in Paris after the attacks, but also a very powerful symbol of people coming together and drawing strength from one another. Well, this is La Place de la République in Paris, a place where I've spent a great deal of time in recent days. It is a meeting place for Parisians, a place where demonstrations often begin, and in recent days has become a makeshift memorial for the victims, where people have come to lay flowers and light candles. And despite a sense of grieving and sadness, there's also been room for lively debate. I can't count the number of times I heard sometimes loud debate over the role France should be playing in the fight against ISIS or how open France should be to immigrants or France's role in the migrant crisis. One of the words on that monument back there is liberté and the French cherish that ability to debate openly sometimes topics that aren't easy to handle and that freedom was perhaps one of the reasons France was targeted on Friday. The attackers were able to kill a great number of people but they were not able to kill the French population's ability to speak their minds. I guess the question I've been thinking about this week it has to do with all of the emotion that's generated by the events of a week ago. Not just the grief and sorrow that's felt here in Paris, because that will pass, but what about the anger and fear which seems to be coming more from other countries than from people here, the United States in particular. There are important decisions for world leaders to make about how to respond to ISIS, about how to manage the refugee crisis that's sweeping through Europe. And making those decisions in a climate of fear and anger can be a very dangerous thing. Some people would argue, have argued, that a lot of the problems the world is in today are a consequence of having made decisions 15 years ago in a climate of fear and anger. And if those kinds of mistakes are made again, then the question is, what will the price for that be? And who's going to pay it this time?